What's up guys? Welcome back to Life of Bliss. Today I'm going to be going over how I set up my home network. If you remember back earlier in the build series, I ran a lot of cat cable down here in the basement as well as some new runs for the upstairs. Right now all the cables in the back room just hanging from the ceiling, not connected to anything. So today I'm going to be going over the products that I'm using as well as where it all is going to be going and just a quick overview of how I set things up. I'll leave a link to all the products that I'm using down in the description if you want to check those out. But first, we'll start off here with this NavPoint AV rack. This is a 15U rack, uh, fully enclosed, glass front. It has two fans, two exhaust fans up top here. Um, the side panels are lockable and removable. Uh, I think this thing was $250. So for, for $250, I feel like it was an excellent deal uh, compared to some of the others out there. It seems very sturdy. I'm excited to get it up and see how everything fits in there. Uh, but like I said, 250 bucks, not a bad deal at all. Um, next, I got a Cable Matters patch panel. I got a D-Link 48 port switch. Next, I got some NavPoint 1U shelving. Uh, again, these are an excellent value. I think for the two of these, I only paid right around $35. So again, I'll leave a link in the description down below for that. And then I've also got just termination points, uh, boots, Velcro for organizing everything, and I picked up a few tools uh, to make sure I could get the job done. So let's go to the back room. I'll show you where all this will be going, and we'll get started. So here's the back room. Uh, this is actually the back of the refrigerator wall in the bar. Um, as you can see down here, this is my router, my small 8-switch, my modem, um, just all piled on the floor. It was sitting on some shelves at one point, and then some furniture and now everything's out of here, at least in this part of the basement, so it's just all sitting on the floor. Um, obviously needs to be picked up. So, these are all the wires running from the various points throughout the house, and this is what we need to get connected as well. So to start, I'm going to mount the, uh, the AV rack here on this back wall, and I've got a mounting bracket for that, and I'll need to take some concrete anchors, drill out a little bit of the concrete, put the anchors in, and put my mounting bracket up. So. Let me go ahead and get started on that, and then we'll get everything uh, mounted up on the wall. After making sure everything was level and marking the holes for the mounting bracket, I took my hammer drill with the correct size concrete bit and drilled out some holes for the concrete anchors. Now for the critical moment to see if everything lined up. Nicely done, Kyle. After a few hits with a hammer, all of the concrete anchors were in place. The bracket was tightened against the wall and ready for the rack. And here's a pro tip for all you guys wanting to install this by yourself. Make sure the rack is actually on the mounting bracket before letting go. I bent out the mounting tabs just slightly, took the side panels off, and grabbed my super strong wife to help me install this thing. So my next step is to start running the cat wire. I'm going to go ahead and install the patch panel and start making the connections on the back with the punch down tool. Uh, to do this, I'm going to mount it upside down, run all the wires to where I can access the panel from the front side, and then once all of them are punched down, flip it back over and remount it. Installing the panel this way first gives me easier access to the back side of the panel, allows me to cut the ethernet cable to the proper length, and gives me a solid surface to punch them down on. Here's an example of the first wire I did. Using a special punch down tool, you're just following the color coding along the top and bottom for each wire. I'm doing all of these in the B configuration. Here's a shot of most of the cables attached to the back of the patch panel. As I was doing this, I was making a list of which ports went to which room. That way I could troubleshoot down the road or use specific ports for certain applications if need be. To flip the patch panel, it was unscrewed, turned over, and reattached to the rack. I cut down some spare PVC pipe that I had to tidy up the wires and protect them as they ran up through the ceiling. All the wires were Velcroed and ran to the same side of the rack and up through the top. The PVC was just taped in place until I could get some proper brackets. The next step is to get the D-Link DSG-1210 installed in the rack and then I'll start making some 
cables to go from the patch panel to the switch. I mounted the switch directly under the patch panel to try and conserve space for components for down the road. So making these short connector wires isn't really hard, but it is time consuming. Uh, to do this, you'll need a cutter and crimper tool, some connector ends to terminate the cat wire, some boots to go over those connections, and then just some extra cat cable that I uh, cut off whenever I was making the connections in the back room. I'll show you an example of how I make one of these, and then I'll show you everything hooked up there in the back room. There are much better videos out there on how to make these cables, but I'll quickly go over how I made mine. After making a template cable, I cut the new cable to the correct length and stripped about one inch of the jacket off one end. Next is to separate all the wires, configure them in the correct pattern, and use the tool to trim them to the same length. Then push the wires in an RJ45 termination pinout and use the crimp tool to crimp everything in place. Last, slide the boot over the terminated end. Be sure to put the other boot on before going to the opposite end and terminating it as well. Here is just a quick reference picture of the configuration that I did for all of my wiring. These little guys took forever to make, but here all of them are ready to be attached. To satisfy my OCD, I matched the port numbers on both the patch and switch panel. I went back and patched in a cable to the last port to connect to my router. This will connect the switch to the internet. For a power supply and surge protection, I grabbed a rack mountable watt box and mounted it to the back bottom of the rack. I needed to install one of the 1U racks to hold the modem and router and then it was time to hook everything up to see if it worked. To finish up the install, I reattached the side panels and installed the glass door back on the front. So we'll start at the bottom with the watt box. Everything is plugged into there. I've got a cable organizer above that to zip tie or velcro all the cables to. All the power cables are running up along the um, right side over there, separated from the internet cables which is coming in from the top and coming along the left side and I've got my modem router a uh, wireless device for my garage and then the rack server and um, patch panel so that is it for the home network rack uh, as you can hear it's a little bit louder with the fans on you can actually shut those off by unplugging them and it is a lot quieter. Um, they are two fans up top here. They're moving quite a bit of air, so they're gonna be a little louder. Uh, you can always replace those with quieter fans if you're gonna be having this in like an office area or somewhere in your living space, but this is in the back of my basement, so the noise isn't really going to be an issue. So down the road, I plan on adding an NVR for some security cameras, as well as possibly like a home server for movies and things like that. So this will give me plenty of room to do that. I can always move this shelf up or down and lay these on their side to be able to give myself some more room in here. But this will allow for pretty much anything that I have planned in the future. Well, I hope this helps some of you guys out for putting a server rack in your own home. Like I said, I'm going to leave links to everything down below in the description. Thanks for checking out the video, and I will see you guys soon.